hopefully Callum Hudson Odoi will have a better season next year. And, and with Willian gone, and if Chelsea don't uh, sign an, another attacker, a wide attacker, yeah. he could definitely have a chance for more minutes if he stays fit and in form. I mean, one thing I sort of want to move on to now is is sort of the style of play next season because I don't think it's going to be. I hope it's not radically different to this year I just hope it's more refined and less uncertain um, and I think the big question a lot of Chelsea fans are sort of asking ourselves right now is is how is Frank Lampard other than just buying centre-backs and buying a left-back and buying a new goalkeeper how is Frank going to fix the defensive problem because personally for me I really don't want to see Chelsea become a reactive team and go back to counter-attacking yeah. football yeah I like over the past two seasons how we, we're starting to try and play more progressive football I guess the, it's a it's a difficult question, but how is Frank gonna sort of measure and sort of it, it's it's keep us proactive and progressive, but more defensively secure? I think that's the big thing for next season, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think so. And I think I think Frank, Jody, and his team—they know what they need to do. Um, you know, for me, this season Lampard was forced to rely upon certain players that he would not have used as much this season. For example, if Kante was playing, he would have made a massive difference to us as the season went on. Uh, we've seen glimpses of what. I think, yeah, not not what I think, what we're definitely about. Obviously, four three three sitting DM, having two roaming eight supporting the play, supporting the attack, like how we used to play back in the day. You know, I think with the players we're signing, that is definitely what the uh, the motto is, and it's a, it's that modern style of football. It's about you know stretching the play, creating the spaces between the lines, and obviously you need players who have great individual ability. To obviously, um, you know, take that style of football to the next level, which is just the reality of, you know, big clubs. I mean, you know, when people, I feel when Frank gets criticism, you have to apply that to everything. I think that's how you find what's true in football. That's how, that's how you find what's right. You know, let's not pretend that, you know, you're the best managers in the world, like your Klopps and, 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 and Peps. The teams they inherited in their first season, let's not pretend that they were supposed to win the league with them. Because, you know, you only do that because it's, it's like yin and yang. You know, you need the manager, but you also need the, the right players for his system and the right quality. I mean, that's the whole difference. I mean, if, uh, if that didn't matter, then why would, you, why would clubs even decide to go to the transfer market knowing that you could just condition all of that yourself uh, in-house? In so um, I don't really think it works like that. The reality is stats show that we're not conceding like 50 shots a game. What happens is that in key decisive moments, that's when things fail. And when that happens, I think that's proof that that is the individual quality on show. I think uh, when people are mentioning, uh, you know, complaining about defending, as you mentioned yourself, you know, you don't want us to become another reactive team that just sits back and defend. But the only solution to a porous team like that is literally to sit back, keep your shape, defend and play on the counterattack, you know, which is not what we're trying to do. And it wouldn't make sense to do that in your first foundation year where you're setting up a young squad and young players for the future to grow and improve, et cetera, et cetera. So that would be absolutely counterproductive. And I don't know, this is where I get a little bit frustrated sometimes because it feels like these are, I don't know, they feel like questions that have very, like, not simple answers, but it feels like you have to give more benefit of the doubt. Yeah, you have to, I don't know how to even express myself right now but uh i think that you know any worries people are having i wouldn't really worry too much i think um until we have the right defense i mean we've seen with teams like liverpool it took them three seasons to get the right squads and when they had that boom we saw that with man city too it took them two and a half seasons and a january window from laporte to come in and obviously be that that right team you know you see it with but you see it with every big club that's the nature of the game that's how it works and i just think that lampard and his team have shown the signings of your Werner, Ziyech and Kai coming very soon. With how we're playing too, he, he knows what we need to do. He knows what players we need. And the only thing that can help us now is the market. And that's why the market's there. So I think um, a lot, I don't think we'll be perfect defensively because I think that perfection comes when players are at their prime. You know, as we saw against uh, Bayern Munich, the way they executed their high line was superb. And people kept criticising Tam Abraham for getting that. Tammy's not getting offside against uh, Burnley right now or getting offside against uh, Swansea City. You know, he's, this is against Bayern Munich, who have players in their prime, one of the best teams in the world, who know how to do these things masterfully. And that's the level we're trying to get to. That's the level we are going to get to. I, I guarantee it 100%. And um, I think, again, it's about 
just having that perspective of knowing that okay we're still a work in progress we uh we can see some of the uh the positive signs to come and we're seeing now that actions are being taken to help rectify those issues and make us more solid and stronger as you've pointed out for me it's there has been a lot of positive signs this season and i think that there's certain performances when i look back at the season as i'm sort of doing review content on my channel for the season where i'm like you know, I can sort of, it sounds easy to say, but I can sort of accept defensive inefficiencies this season because I've watched a lot of great defences at Chelsea and the thing we don't need to be is, as we, we're talking about, sort of just go back to the old identity of Chelsea because it's just not going to work. And as well, the current players we have, I think also the coach we have, doesn't want to play that style of football. So yeah. we just we just be pause, we'd hit the pause button and I think it wouldn't exactly. suit the players we have. I think we need to pursue a more attacking play, a more attacking style of play like we have been doing over the previous two seasons, which I think is going to get us more competitive in the current game rather than trying to just go, oh, well, it worked under Conte, it worked under Mourinho. And I'm like, that was five, six years ago. The game has yeah. radically changed. You cannot do reactive football. I think why Jose will probably struggle at Spurs is because if you watch them, I, under, I know he's only been there a couple months, but like, I think the best example for me is when Frank has come up against Jose a vastly more experienced manager and he's done him yeah. twice tactically with Chelsea playing on the front foot whilst Jose doing his type of reactive football. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you agree. That was for me like a no, big I example. I 1,000% like, agree. That's where Chelsea needs to be yeah. and that's where Chelsea used to be and we shouldn't be going back anymore. No, um, honestly, man, that is the perfect example to use. I think that is literally the Chelsea, uh, the new Chelsea defeating the old Chelsea. You know, Tottenham have spent a ton of money this window. The players they have in midfield, they should not be playing a style of football like that. And as we're seeing already, you know, it, it might work against them in the long term. Uh, you know, that game in particular really sums up why we have to, as a fan base, support this uh, transition, support this new era that we're, we're going into. And, um, you know, just understand that, you know, it's not going to be perfect. You know, you can't expect perfection when you have maybe a lot of players that won't be here in the next year or two. And I, I, I get it. I understand that after a game, we get upset sometimes if the result isn't there. But there has to be a sense of perspective. You know, there has to be that sense of perspective at the end. You can't just get too definitive with your hate and your assessments of players, which happens time and time again. And to be honest, I think in particular this season, maybe that's the one thing that really surprised me. You know, I think, uh, you know, for a long time, people know I've been speaking about, I've been a youth advocate for a long time. I've been saying we have to use these guys. They're the future. They're going to save this club millions. They're going to help us get to the next level. They play the right style of football that is needed and complements the modern game too. These, This is what we have to turn to. So when I'm seeing people writing off like a 20-year-old Mason Mount, writing off a 22-year-old Tammy Abraham, where, you know, again... You know, he's always been a poacher his whole life. He's learning how to play as a complete striker, you know, which involves a lot more things to his game. And to be honest, in his first season doing that, he's got 18 goals throughout the season, where a guy from our academy doing that, he's scored some big goals against some big teams too. And he's got a lot of points with the goals he scored. He's not scoring like the, you know, the fifth goal or, or the sixth goal. You know, in a, So it is quite disheartening in the sense that you know, where's this disconnect? Why is it hard to understand that difference in a sense? You know, what is, why can't you understand that you're looking at someone who right now isn't going to be like this in three or four years time? And it's quite obvious that's going to be the case when you just look throughout his, throughout history, throughout football, throughout this team. I, I remember when Lampard was signed, ask any single Chelsea fan if he was going to be anything what he was in the end they would have said no a lot of people didn't even understand why we signed him in the first place it was the same thing for Terry it was the same thing for so many of these players too and this is what I was mentioning at the start it just feels like these recycled conversations recycled assessments recycled debates but it's just like at what point does a realisa realisation epiphany just come in like whoa wow maybe you know how I'm seeing things and speaking about things is absolutely wrong mm -hmm.